Hey everyone, welcome back to Plan With B. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. Today I wanted to do a video on my favorite current planner inserts that I use in my pocket planner, as well as how I utilize them in the hopes that this will inspire and help others out there as well when setting up their planners. So if you watch my other videos, you know that I am in this Moterm pocket planner. It is the light gray. I love it. I have my eye on the black Moterm pocket planner. However, it is not yet restocked in that color. I've owned the black in the Moterm line before, and I really, really like their black planner. So I'm hoping to get my hands on one of those soon, but I do love this light gray. It's almost like a warm light gray. So it has a little bit of that taupey undertone to it, and I really am enjoying it. My pocket ring size has always been one of my favorite planning systems. And I'm going to share with you some of my favorite inserts that I'm currently using in mine. So the first one that is an absolute must, and I'm going to show these to you guys blank, and I'm gonna show you in my planner how I'm utilizing them. So this one's an absolute must, it's a monthly overview. So there's all different kind of monthly overviews. There's month on two page, month on one page, month with task lists. I mean, there's just countless amounts of monthly overviews. And I really think a monthly overview is very important, at least for myself. My brain kind of thinks in a monthly form, so I need to see everything laid out for the month. And these ones are currently what I am using by Peanuts Planner Co. It has a monthly calendar here on the right hand side, as well as some boxes that you can use for to-do list tasks, important events. Then on the left hand side, it has two columns and a couple other boxes at the top, and there's numbers going down the side here all the way to 31, so there's a line for each day. What I really enjoy about Peanuts Planner Co. inserts is that in a pocket planner, they work very well because she puts her lines pretty close together. Therefore, I can utilize the page more. On other inserts, sometimes the lines are too far spaced that I'm not utilizing the full page to write as much as I can write on there because I could write pretty small. So that's one thing that I love about her inserts for in a pocket size planner. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip to how I'm utilizing my monthly calendar. And let's see, I'm gonna go to my monthly tab here and you can see September's spread. So basically on the right hand side here on the calendar, I have written in all the days and I like to get undated because I start my planners off at different times of the year. So you'll notice that most of my stuff just started in August because I just refreshed my planner for the August through July calendar year so that it's academic. And that's just how ever since my daughter has started school, I like to use my calendars. So the way that I'm using this is on the monthly calendar side, I'm using some transparent sticky date dots to just highlight very important events and appointments. And at the bottom here, I have wrote dates and then I write the actual date down the side and then what each one is for. Whether it's for a holiday, an appointment, an event, whatever I need to see at a monthly glance that needs to catch my eye. I'm also using this column up here to kind of just write little monthly priorities that must get done. And then down here, I just have a little column that I'm using for notes currently, but this could change as the month goes on. Whatever is relevant in my life is how I'm going to set this up. On the left-hand side, I have broken this down further into more columns, and I have used this for mine and my husband's work schedules, as well as my daughter's babysit and school schedule. She's five years old, so sometimes um, family members are watching when my husband and my work schedules overlap. So I have just written who will have her on what days and the time frame, as well as her school schedule, which right now is completely virtual due to the pandemic. So that is how I've used this side. And right next to the number, there was an empty box here. So I have written in the, you can see the empty box, the day of the week so that I can better see which day that, that is. You can utilize this for whatever you need to. You can track your steps, you can track your work schedule, you can track your meals. I mean, whatever you like to track, this could be used as a tracker. Um, but I personally like to see a whole layout of our work schedules, the school schedule, babysit schedule, appointments, events, and holidays. So that is how I am utilizing my monthly spread. So the next insert that I love to have on hand is a weekly spread. 
There are so many different weekly spreads that you can get. You can go from a week on one page to a week on four pages to a week on seven pages. There are just so many different formats. I'm personally guilty of loving and hoarding inserts. I buy inserts off Etsy and planner shop sites all the time, the PDF versions, and I store them in my Dropbox and I just have so many that I love and I love to try out new inserts because it's just a way to kind of switch things up and also depending on what is going on that week or day, different inserts could be better utilized depending on what's going on and depending on how they are laid out. So I'm just going to show you two different style of weeklies that I've recently been using but I have used many many more than this. So these are both by Simple and Trendy Co. I love her shop. She as well has very minimalistic and functional inserts which is what I like to use. So this first one is a week on one page. I really like this one for when there's not much going on in my week but when you're in a pocket planner sometimes you need more space than just one page. So I could see really utilizing this in a larger planner like an A5, maybe a personal size, half letter, and I think you'd have more than enough space. However, in here I realized with things going on lately that I did need a little more space, so I then went and got her week on two page Hobonichi style because I used to have a Hobonichi weeks and I loved the layout. However, I missed being able to put my own inserts in and things. So when I saw that she had this, I got it immediately and I'm really enjoying it. This allows me more space to have a breakdown of holidays, events, things that are day specific, and then a running priority and task list on this side. And you can use it for many more things than that. If you want to plan your meals out or your steps or track anything or have notes about anything, you can do that over here. You can also do some journaling if you're into daily journaling. So I really do like this layout and I'm going to show you guys how I'm using them. So if we go to my current section and the today section, it's going to bring me to today. I'm going to show you guys first the week on one page here. So the way that I was using this was I wrote in up top here my monthly calendar and then I highlighted which week it was and then I further boxed with a different color highlighter days that had specific events going on. And then over here, I just wrote down those dates and put what the event was for that day. So I could have a quick overview of what was going on that week that was very important to catch my eye. Down below, I just had a running task list of things that I needed to get done. This worked out great, but like I said, I think it would be better suited for a larger planner because I just have a little bit too much going on to squeeze it in. So I then went to the Hobonichi style and let me show you how that looks. This is the same week as the one I just showed you just so that you could see. And what I've done is I broke down my week over here by holiday, events going on, and appointments. I wrote in the dates here in the boxes and just highlighted them as well as I wrote up top the month and highlighted that as well. Over here, I decided to break this up into weekly priorities and weekly tasks. I just put a little bit of highlight here and down for the check boxes and I wrote the top priorities that I must get done this week and a running task list of what I would like to get done this week. Whatever I do not will be migrated to the next week and whatever I do complete, I will just put a check mark. I'm really enjoying this insert for my weekly currently and I feel like I'm utilizing it well and I'm able to do a complete week breakdown on here without running out of space. The next insert that I have that is one of my favorites is by Peanuts Planner Co. and it's the categorized task list. She has them in a five column and a three column categorized list. I love using these for so many different reasons. They can be utilized in so many different ways. So the way that I am using them is for my inbox. And if you saw my previous planner flip throughs, you'll notice that I did um, throw away some of my old inbox sheets. I don't keep them once they're completely filled out and finished. Once everything is highlighted, I do throw them away unless I find that there's something I need to reference. But I just don't like to carry around a bunch of extra papers with me making my planner bulkier and heavier that I don't need to access. If it's something that I don't need to reference, it's just going in the trash. So they've already helped me stay protective and get things done, so I no longer feel the need to keep them. 
So for my inbox, I'm using these to have different categories as urgent, task, migrate, research, and ideas so that I can quickly glance and see if something is a task that I need to get done immediately, if it's something that I just need to migrate to a different part of my planner or filing system, if it's something that needs more time and research to be done, or if it's just an idea or a possibility of something that I wanted to do in the future. So I can quickly look at this and see what things I need to immediately get done. And when I finish them, I just highlight it off with one of my Tombow highlighters or mild liners. And you can just take a look and see how I have those set up. I just love these. They work great for my inbox. If you've seen my planning system and flip through, you'll know that an inbox is very important to me. It's a way to get out every thought and idea out of your brain and onto paper so that you can further break it down and be productive. I also like to use this insert for a to buy list. Anytime I think of anything that I need to buy at some point, I just write it down here. I have it categorized as store, so there's Target, Walmart, Amazon, Etsy, and then I have a blank one which I'm just going to use for other. And basically what I do is when I think of something I need to get, I simply write it down and I just put a dot at what store I could find it at. So the next time that I'm in one of those stores or shopping online at one of those places, I can just look at my list and see what items that are available there that I could pick up while I'm there. Although there's a lot more inserts I could tell you about that I absolutely love to use, the last one that I'm going to tell you that I think is a must is a blank insert. Whether it's grid dot blank or lined, I just think having paper where you can write down anything is an absolute must in your planner. Whether you just need to write down notes, lists, you can fill it out on here. I like doing the grid style paper because it's already lined off in both ways. So you can create boxes, you can create columns, you can create rows, however you wanna set it up for whatever kind of information you want to put on here. So I use grid paper for so many different things. In my notes section, it's filled with different notes on grid paper. You'll see back here, different ideas, bills that I'm paying off, meal ideas. I just think it's a must to have some sort of blank paper on hand to be able to jot down whatever you need to. I really also enjoy using list inserts as well as project planners and goal inserts and a lot of different other inserts because like I said, I just love getting different inserts, printing them out and being able to utilize them differently. But I do believe that the four that I just showed you are the absolute must and if those were the only four that I could have for in my planner, I think that I would be able to have a amazing planner system that would work great for me. I hope that this has given you some inspiration and helpful tips when setting up your own planner or looking for inserts to create a more functional, minimalistic planner setup. Be sure to let me know down in the comments below what your favorite current planning inserts are. And don't forget to like and subscribe and be sure to follow me on all my platforms. You can find me on Instagram, Pinterest, my blog, as well as here on YouTube. I also just wanted to quickly mention that if you follow me on my blog or Instagram, you may have already seen this, but I did create some freebies for you guys. I created some planner cards as well as some printable sticky notes. So be sure to go check out my Instagram underscore plan with B underscore and check out my freebies link which will bring you to my website and be sure to print those out. Make sure that you guys tag me on Instagram so I can see how you are utilizing your freebies. I also wanted to mention that once I become more acclimated with the new homeschool and virtual schooling routine, I will be doing a video on how I use a section in my planner to assist me with virtual homeschooling for my daughter. So be sure to subscribe and stay tuned to see that as well. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.